What's up guys, my name's Dean, or as most of you know me, Twisty, and it's time to get into the round 19 wrap-up of the AFL season. Let's get stuck in straight into that ladder. Now, let's have a look, because it is very tight at the top end here. Hawthorne, two games clear of GWS, who have a two percentage point gap, which is about three goals uh, over the Sydney Swans. Geelong have a 0.13 percentage gap over the Adelaide Crows and that separates fourth and fifth so only I think it's three points is actually separating those two sides right now and if you yeah if you do, if you don't win by enough you're you're in a little bit of strife in these ones here uh, and the Crows like sitting in fifth there but uh, could have they missed an opportunity Essendon kicked three goals late in that game uh, and they pushed the Crows percentage back down into fifth spot yeah, so we'd probably say West Coast, the Dogs, and North Melbourne. They're the three sides that are out of that premiership race now. We know West Coast have no uh, no success travelling, really. They've had so many issues travelling. They just lost to Collingwood, the MCG, so they can't play the MCG, which means they can't win the flag. The Western Bulldogs, uh, they've just been hit hard with so many injuries, and it's been really, really tough for their season to just keep rolling along. I still think they'll win three of their next four, which could put them in the top four or at least give them a home final against a West Coast or a North Melbourne. So uh, they're definitely still in that chance for, for a home final at Etihad Stadium, which could mean they could be past the first weekend of that final series. And then you've got North Melbourne who can beat the subpar teams but have real trouble matching it with the best. So uh, very... Very interesting to see how that final series plays out because right now uh, it's almost 100% that the top eight is set. Uh, St Kilda needs to win four out of four games and North Melbourne needs to lose four out of four games. Same goes for Port Adelaide in that one as well. So uh, that was a, a big sort of two-game switch where North Melbourne beats St Kilda, but we'll get into that in a little bit of time. Let's take a look at Friday night, Geelong and the Western Bulldogs. 25-point win to the Cats here over the Dogs. Uh, pretty good nights from a couple of their forwards in Stanley and Motlop. Eight goals between them. P. Dangerfield got himself another three goals and another three votes. So uh, he was a very, very influential player once again. Uh, you pretty much have him wrapped up with the Brownlow as well at the moment. So uh, good luck beating him. Uh, the Dogs, they sort of faded toward the... Third, end of the third quarter and then uh, fought a little bit in the last quarter but it was fairly close as well so uh, they they kind of stuck with them but not for long enough and I think that's probably going to be their issue with their sort of tier 2 tier 3 players now that we have to see because they've had so many injuries is that these guys can maintain that pressure but not for an entire four quarters and that sort of puts more pressure on their other forward or other players um, you know, they could have kicked a little bit straighter. I think they had uh, similar sort of scoring shots, 23 each. So uh, if, if they kicked a little bit straighter, they would have been closer in the game. But uh, yeah, I think Geelong were just too good on the night. And uh, they'll be they'll be right up there in flag, uh, flag contention as well. As will this side here, the GWS Giants walloped Richmond on the weekend. Oh man, look at this. Just uh, boy, oh boy, Richmond, what were you doing? Three goals Five at the end of the day. Uh, only the two goal kickers in Rewalt and Lloyd. Uh, and it just did not go to plan for them. Toby Green kicked three. Stevie J kicked three. And Sam Reed also had three for the Giants. And it really was just a very classy display. I know there's Chillong players there. So I'm going to actually read out uh, the disposal getters for that game. So we had Stephen Canelio had 33 disposals, Tom Scully had 30, Heath Shaw had 29, and Dylan Shiel had 25 as well. And even, you know, Zach Williams and Josh Kelly were 24 and 21 there. Um, you know, they didn't have like a ton of the ball, but they still had a very effective disposal. I mean, 21 is still a lot of ball, but uh, every time they got the ball, it was, it was a huge um, sort of meters gain kind of thing. And and you just look the way the Giants stream through the middle of the ground. They do it uh, better than any other club in the competition. Is They just run in a big wave of numbers. And and they're very hard to stop when they, they can do that and do that well. And 
Uh, you look at the other side of the coin, Richmond, where to now for, for them? We've asked ourselves these questions like three or four times. I mean, even as a, I didn't really watch this game, to be honest. I was busy. But, um, yeah, I kind of thought Richmond were pretty screwed anyway going in. So, uh, the Giants, they've got a three-goal lead into second spot. Can they hold that for the rest of the season? I think they'll win at least three games. They play North Melbourne in round 23, and that will determine if they get a top two finish or not. Now, let's keep going. Hawthorne uh, at Aurora against Carlton. Only getting home by the 19 points in the end. Uh, it was quite a rainy game and uh, pretty inaccurate goal kicking early. Sort of picked up a little bit later on in the match. But the Hawks did as they do. They get the job done. They get the win. Uh, yeah, just another, another clinical performance from Hawthorne. But Carlton, I think Carlton have been pretty good the last three weeks. Losing to... West Coast by a goal, they lost to Sydney by a goal, and now they've only lost to the Hawks by three goals. So they've been pretty respectable and competitive in those three games. I think they just lost it a little bit early against Hawthorne and and uh, were sort of too busy chasing tail to get back into this one. Uh, but there's still you know a lot of upside for the Blues that they've shown this year anyway. I think they'll be pretty pleased with their output. Twilight game, Collingwood beat the Eagles by 19 points, so similar mar same margin. Darcy Moore was outstanding in that first half. Uh, kicked three goals, too, and he took some huge clunking marks as well. Uh, should have ended up with five or six goals at the end of there, Darcy Moore. But uh, very, very good stuff from the Magpies. And West Coast, gee, they can't travel. That's that's a huge issue for them. I mean, Darling kicked four goals. Kennedy kicked a couple as well. And, and uh, Josh Kennedy's kicked two goals, too, and probably two on the full, I think, as well. So, uh, you know, they've got to fix... The way they play away from home, is it the web that doesn't work on a bigger ground like the G? Is it just they, you know, they just feel like they don't have that home crowd advantage? I don't know. There's probably a few mind games now that uh, it's been talked up a lot that West Coast can't win away. It's probably sort of seeping into their head. Well, crap, can we do this on the road? Can we win? Uh, and that'll probably haunt them coming into the final series, I think. But uh, the Magpies, very good. Very, very good. They're uh, they're looking, but they're looking sort of more like the side everyone thought they'd be. Uh, and when I say everyone, I mean like some people <laughs> thought they would be towards the start of the year. It was sort of like a, you know, a pretty good side that could push for the finals, and that's sort of what they're looking for, looking at right now. Uh, let's look at the Coleman Kennedy one goal lead over Franklin, who's a two goal lead over Lynch. Everyone's a bit far back unless uh, you see Beds kick ten or something next weekend. Uh, but yes. That is very close as well. That'll be decided around 23, that Coleman race. Keep looking now. We've got the Brisbane Lions and Port Adelaide Saturday night thumping from the power delivered to the Lions. Uh, 94 points, or is it 90, 96? I think that's 96 points in the end there. Uh, Port Adelaide won. They had almost 50 scoring shots. Should have had 35 goals if they kicked them bloody straight. But uh, Wingard had five, Butcher had four. So does that mean Butcher keeps his spot on the list if Schultz retires at the end of the year, which I think will probably happen. So um, maybe there is a spot for him in that team if he fixes up his kicking. He kicked four two, so that's better than fifty percent, uh, which you know you'd want to see that a little bit more. And Brisbane, you know, they kicked seventy nine points, which isn't a bad effort. It's just defensively they were woeful. So um, still plenty of things to work on for both sides here in this one and. Uh, Port Adelaide, you know, they're pretty happy with that performance. Probably the best win they've had all season. So they'd be much happier with that than the Lions would be looking at that scoreboard. Uh, the other Saturday night game, North Melbourne beat uh, St Kilda by 23 points. They sort of jumped out of the gun as well and held that lead majority of the night, uh, which would generally, generally speaking, end St Kilda's final chances. There is still a mathematical possibility but it is highly, highly unlikely that they would now make the eight. North Melbourne would have to lose the next four, although I think that they probably are going to lose the next four. I think St Kilda would then have to win the next four. I think they'll win three games at a minimum, but it's going to be a tough ask. I think they're probably Sydney, so that'll be the toughest game for them to win. Uh, Benny Brown kicked three goals. Wait injured his hip again after kicking a couple of goals, so... Once again, uh, Jared Waite out, and North Melbourne, you know, they have to be probably the fittest side going into September if they're going to win. I, don't, I just can't see it happening, though. I just think their elimination final booted because those top five, 
Whoever finishes in fifth, I reckon is going to destroy North Melbourne in those uh, final series. Uh, let's keep going. Melbourne beat the Gold Coast Suns by two points. Tom Lynch had a chance to win the game after the siren. It was about 50 out on the boundary. Really difficult kick. Uh, I don't think it didn't actually get a score, although it did get punched through at one stage. So, uh, guess it was a two point win in the end rather than a one point win. Uh, but he, he did not take that opportunity. He was probably the Gold Coast best player. He looked the most dangerous. Had 20 touches as well and, and kicked a couple of goals there. Jack Watts was the match winner for Melbourne. Kicked three goals and had plenty of the ball. Uh, kicked the winning goal as well in that one. So uh, from what was a really, really poorly skilled game, had a really great and amazing finish. Um, I think Rodney Eid said something like, um, mistakes cause chaos which cause opportunity, or chaos causes opportunity. And we sort of learned that throughout this game because there was so many turnovers, so many bad pieces of play that uh, really, uh, you know, like these these two sides need to work on that. And then at the end, it was it was who could be the classiest player to come to the fold. You had Jack Watts kick the match-winning goal where he'd missed two sh shots earlier on in the match uh, to the left-hand side, and he snuck that one through. And then you've got Tom Lynch, who was also the other gun at the other end. And I actually thought he would probably kick it. If anyone on the Gold Coast were going to kick that goal, it would be him. But not to be. The D's got home over the line in that one. Keep going. Port Adelaide. Oh, what am I talking about? Port Adelaide. It's Fremantle and the Sydney Swans here. 90 point winners to Swans. They also missed an opportunity to jump into second spot. Uh, allowing the power to kick a couple of goals late. Matty Pavlich's 350th game. He kicked two goals. He was uh, pretty good as well. Again, some huge numbers for some Dockers. David Mundy had 44 disposals. Lockie Neal had 41 disposals. And Ed Langdon had 29 there. Sort of to wrap that one up. But um, like two, that's four players in one match getting over 40 disposals. Kennedy, Hanabry, Mundy and Neal all getting 40 plus disposals there and it's just quite insane that they managed to do that Kennedy was probably the best player on the ground 45 in the three goals but uh, wow uh, Sydney they're damaging uh, well under Pavlich though 350 games I mean I know he's probably going to retire at the end of the year but he's been a champion if he played for a Victorian club he would be spoken more highly of than any other forward in the game at this point in time uh, but because he's probably in WA, he doesn't get as much of the limelight. South Australian-born Matty Pav, uh, but extraordinarily good player. Will be in the Hall of Fame in a few years' time. Uh, the Adelaide Crows beat Essendon. Big win. Again, I said this in sort of my preview. I didn't really need to say much because it was going to be a big win. Uh, but three late goals to the Bombers sort of killed the Adelaide uh, percentage boost into fourth. So... Uh, could that be costly come the end of the season? It's going to be very tight to see who's going to win by the biggest margins. So, very, very interesting coming up. And, um, yeah, Eddie Betts kicked five there. Jenkins, I think, only kicked one or two, so that put him behind a little bit in the Coleman uh, as far as Betts is concerned. McGovern and Cameron, four goals each as well. And Joe Danaher, he's kicked a couple, he's kicked some, uh, a few mini bags the last couple of weeks. So, well done to Joe Danaher. Uh, he should be better for the run going into the end of the season. But that is it for the wrap-up this week. Yeah, we've got another big round coming up. Round 20 next week means there's only four matches to go. You've got Richmond Collingwood Friday night, Sydney Port, uh, another big game. Western Bulldogs North Melbourne next week is a huge game. And then you've got the Derby as well. So uh, plenty of things to look forward to next week in the preview. I'll see you guys on Friday for all of that. But until next time, leave a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see all of you guys later.